and we're modeling the kitchen benches and our task right now is to put a kitchen sink into the bench we might put it about mid-length along that bench there okay so going into a top view and we're going to use an object called a chamfer box okay so where it says standard primitives over here uh, click on the down arrow and go down to extended primitives and we want a thing called a chamfer box and I'm going to throw something in there that randomly looks like about the shape and size of a kitchen sink and then I'm going to adjust the measurements to make it actually fit now you'll notice it's down on the floor at the moment um, but what we'll do is we'll modify it and uh, fillet segments so you'll notice that the rounding over is divided up into little segments little chunky lines and it defaults to three fillet segments which makes the thing very chunky and lumpy looking okay if you looked at it really closely it wouldn't have a smooth radius around there it's got basically three little triangles that make up that corner so um, fillet segments I think we'll change that to about 10 right and that smooths, smooths the whole thing up rather nicely um, next thing we need to do is to change the actual radius of the fillet in engineering the word fillet means rounding over of something so um, it's got nothing to do with taking bones out of fish uh, so a fillet of about maybe 10 to oh, maybe 15 millimeters would be good all right so we've just got a nice little gentle radius around the corner of our sink okay now the length width and height um, the actual width is, is what I would call the length uh, that's mine's turned out at about 1429 millimeters I think a decent kitchen sink would be this is a nice big bench let's go 1500 millimeters okay 1500 now we need some a decent amount of height because we're going to have to sculpt out the sink bowly part okay so um in order to be able to do that we need a height of about how deep's your sink probably oh, i think 300 would be pretty sufficient um make it 350 just to be on the safe side so where it says height make that 350 um and length is actually the width of the the thing right so your standard bench is 600 um we so i think yeah you probably go about 500 for width i think which is actually length in the program right so there we go so we've got we've got our correct parameters now what we're going to do is lift that box up so that it just barely pops out through the top of the bench because the sinks gonna sit slightly above the bench top all right so you'll be able to see that uh, if I zoom in on that view so I want I want most of it underneath the bench a little bit sticking up on top and when I look at that more closely I, I, I think I could possibly round it a little bit more I put a I think it was a 15 millimeter fillet on it let's go let's see what 25 looks like yeah i like that a bit better go for a 25 mil fillet now there's a bit of an issue uh in that when we create holes in this thing to make the actual sinks the sink bowly parts um we're going to be stuck with the um the granite being in the way right so by creating a hole in this sink object is not automatically going to take a hole out of the granite and it's not automatically going to take a hole out of the kitchen cabinet either so here's the trick to fix that we're going to make a box um, that is slightly smaller than our our actual sink and we're going to penetrate it through the bench top and the cabinet itself so the best place to do that is in a top view uh, we'll just use a standard box will do standard primitives box and I want to make that box just slightly smaller than our, our, our actual sink all right so we're going to make a big hole through the cabinet 
it's just a little bit smaller in that direction. Height wise, just give it stacks of height. Doesn't matter how high it is, but give it plenty of height. Okay, so um, I'll give it um, oh, two meters. I'll go 2,000, okay, for height of that box that I've just created. Right, so there we've got this massive big box going down through our bench, okay? Now, we want to remove that box from our bench top, and we also want to remove it from our cabinet. So, in fact, we need two identical boxes there. So, we're going to go, oh, we've got it selected. We're going to go, I'll just make sure I've got it selected. Yep, okay, I'm going to go edit, clone, copy, okay. So, there's two identical boxes in the same place. Now, here's what we do. We select our bench top, compound objects, pro boolean start picking and i click on one version of that box now because there's an identical version of the box there once you click on it, it it'll look as though you haven't actually done anything but do it anyway right now i'll click on the cabinet itself now what i'm actually going to do I've, I've got rid of that other box that i was going to use as the boolean tool so i'm going to clone that i'm just actually going to clone my sink Right, so just go edit, clone, copy, OK. So I've got two sync objects there at the moment. Click on the cabinet, compound objects, pro boolean, start picking. Now I'll click on the sync object, the chamfer box, because I've got two of them there. Right, and you might, and that's right now. I'm going to move that one out of the way now, and what you'll see da -da, is a nice, neat little hole where the sink actually fits that goes through the um, bench top and the actual cabinet. All right, this is what your bench would look like when your cabinet makers were in the process of installing it. It would come in, in they'd make it up in the factory, they'd bring it in, and start with it, it'd be just a shell. And then they put a top on it, and then they fit it out with the cupboards and drawers and stuff like that. Okay? So, um, now, I've got to put this back into where it belongs, which is about there. Now, it's a bit, little, little bit dodgy to do it um, in, a, in a 3D view. The best way to do it is to make sure it aligns correctly in the top view. Otherwise, it could be out of alignment a bit with the, the hole. So, I'll just fix that up. All right, now we're ready to actually make the little hollowy parts in the in the actual sink. All right, so what we're going to do is create another chamfer box. I'll maximize that top view. Create the chamfer box, and I'm going to put it where I want my so I'm a draining area to the left. Oh, sorry, to the right, I should say. All right, so I'm going to put a chamfer box in there. I'm not too worried about what its actual size is, as long as it looks about right. Right, and I want it to have um, a fillet of about oh, let's go, let's go 50. Oh yeah, that looks all right. I think that's okay. It's got nice rounded corners at 50. Okay, and I'll give it lots of height. I'm going to lift it up into the cabinet. Now let's have a look at it in the front view. All right, so there it is. And I want it to go down most of the way down into this thing that's going to be the sink. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going to go, hang on, Phil, but the, the sink is not a big chunky thing that you can see hanging down under the bench like that. It doesn't matter. We're going to have a cupboard just hiding it, so nobody will know. So it's a bit dodgy in, in terms of how a real sink looks. If we went in underneath it, we've got this big box hanging down underneath. It wouldn't really be there, okay? But... For our purposes, we'll get away with it. Okay, so click on the um, the main sink. I'm going to clone that across. I'm going to clone that. Make another one. Edit, clone, copy. Okay, park it next to that. But I don't want it quite as wide. I want this one to be a little bit narrower. So I'm just going to squash it with the select and uniform scale tool. That'll be good enough. So it'll be the same width. The same front to back distance, but it'll be just a little bit narrower. Okay, so just to show you what that looks like three dimensionally, there it is. 
So I now click on my main cabinet, my main box I should say, compound objects, pro boolean, start picking, click on those two objects there and you've got your two sinky bits. Now at some point or other we probably want to put a suitable material on that, we want it to be kind of stainless steel looking. Uh, one way of doing that would be to go online and get, get a, um, a texture map that is stainless steel and just drag and drop it on there. That's probably the best way to do it. Or you could just um, make a ray trace material and ma um, just make it quite reflective um, to give that silvery kind of look. Okay, so I'm actually going to make it white, even though it's not meant to be white. It's more about it being reflective. So um, I'm going to give it lots of reflection. Um, I'll give it about oh, probably 50 to start with. Um, I can always change that a bit more if I want. I'm going to make it pretty glossy. In fact, I'll go 100. Specular level, go to 100 there. So I'm trying to make something that looks a little bit like chrome or something, okay? Um, right click, assign material to select. Uh, and you'll also have a, a little draining area there, the little indents in, in your sink surface that actually allow it to drain. So I'll show you how I do those. I'm going to go to uh, a left view, the extended primitives, a chamfer ceiling. Oh, I'll use a capsule actually, that'd be even better. So a capsule object. Now watch, watch what happens here. So that's the diameter of the capsule. I'll give it some length. Now I don't really know. I'll make it 500. And I'll probably want to reduce the radius down to about uh, yeah, 15-ish. So I've got this. I'll show you what it looks like uh, in a 3D view. So I've just got this big long roddy looking thing with a rounded end on it so that's just the capsule object um, now i'm going to drop that down in so that it just slightly buries into the surface now the best view to do that in would be a front view i'll zoom in and i want to just drop drop it down so about the bottom kind of third of it sits into the into the sink and I'll move it along so that it ends up draining into that, that dishy part just there. Okay, so that's one of them. I now need a bunch of them. So I'm going to go edit, clone, copy, okay, and move it across to there. I can go control and click on both of them so I can clone them as a pair. Edit, clone, copy, okay. And what I want to do... Um, is, is remove them now from the sink. So I click on the sink, compound objects, pro boolean, start picking, and just click on each of those. And in there, where they were, will, will be a nice little indent. Okay, so what I mean by an indent, we'll have a look at it here. Okay, so we've got a, that sort of looks like a, a drainer area of a sink. I'll just give you a render of that to get a better view of it. Okay, now you could argue I've probably gone a little bit too deep, but that, that'll do for the purpose of this, this part of the activity. Now your next task, um, research a tap, a, kit, a trendy kitchen tap. So I want you to go online find some pictures of kitchen taps, you know, quick next to sort of taps, and have a go at modelling one up for yourself that you can stick into. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to need to sit right in that area just there. Okay?